fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that the happy people have to say. Right, that's something champions know everywhere, wherever you go. Take par bust and Sammy Sneed, born in old Virginia. Slam and Sam has been up on top for years and eaten his Wheaties regularly. And Al Rosen, born in sunny South Carolina, clutch hitter with the Cleveland Indians. There's Al at the plate. Here's a pitch. Another solid sock for a solid champ. And say Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties for 23 baseball seasons. That's the way it goes. South, north, east, west, Wheaties. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. The Lone Ranger's Indian friend, Tonto, drew rein in the stable behind Ma Hank's Henry House Hotel in Modoc City in the southern part of Texas. The good-natured, generous landlady was an old friend of the masked man. Leading Scout in the stable, the Indian moved soundlessly toward the kitchen. He looked forward to seeing Ma, her husband, Uncle Homer Potts, a distinguished New York lawyer, her young houseboy, Ned, lawman Marshal Jim Fraser, and all his other Modoc City friends. Knowing Ma's first question would concern the absent Lone Ranger, Tonto grinned to himself as he opened the kitchen door softly. Ma's arms were buried to the elbows in bread dough, while Uncle Homer sat on a chair near the stove reading Hamlet aloud. Alas, poor Yori. My great sakes alive, Homer. Look who's here. Tonto! Oh. Come in, come in, friend. Where's the Lone Ranger? Oh, him reached town sometime tomorrow. Uh, me expect to meet him on outskirts of town. Good, fine. I figured you and the Lone Ranger had come to town as soon as you heard about the stage robberies. Mm -hmm. What stage robbers? You haven't heard of them, Tonto? No. I thought for sure that was what brought you here. Oh, have some coffee. Uh, uh, we come to Modoc City to try a fine crook named Scar Pickett. Uh, do you think he's in town? Well, we not know for sure where him hide. Lone Ranger in Mule Jaw now, trying to learn more about Pickens. Mule Jaw's a good hundred miles north of here. Uh, Lone Ranger, no sheriff there. Ah, uh, say, I wonder if that scar critter had anything to do with the stage robbery. He might have. Uh, when stage robbed? Uh, two weeks ago, Thursday, Tondo. Fifteen thousand dollars in paper money was stolen. A month before that, $5,000 in gold was taken. Marshal Jim Fraser's done his best to trail the thieves from the scene of the robberies, but he hasn't had much luck. Those crooks are too doggone slick to leave a trail anyone can follow. Whit Roscoe claims he'll go broke if the holdups don't stop. Well, who, Whit Roscoe? Oh, he owns the stage line, Tonto. Oh, he's also one of our permanent guests. Mom! What's the holder? What in thunder? Ma! Uncle Homer! Step inside, Ned. You too, Elfie. 
you two howling hyenas trying to raise the dead on Boot Hill? Don't say that, Ma. Huh? Why, what's wrong with you, boy? Ah, you look plenty pale. I know. I'm glad to see you. Yeah. What, what, what happened to you? We, we saw a ghost. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 is that all? Oh, it's the truth, Ma. Don't go right it is. We saw it as plain as we're seeing you, Uncle Homer, and Tano. Uh, in that case, suppose you describe this uh, apparition, Inky. It's the scariest looking thing you can imagine, Uncle Homer. Mm-hmm. About my size, I'd say. Yeah, it stood there, off the trail. It, yeah. it glowed with the most awful looking light you ever saw. Well, uh, what color was the light? It, eh? Sort of a bluish red. It bluish. It, by George, now I understand. You know, I believe what you saw was nothing but a dead tree. You know, sometimes huh? dead trees kind of rot. A huh. fungus attacks them. Why? I you know, don't. That's right. That's right, Homer. You know better than to believe in ghosts. Why, of course, there's a growth that spreads all over trees like that. I've forgotten the name, but the light you boys saw is commonly called foxfire. Foxfire? Sure. Now tell me, where did you see this tree? Well, Mom gave me the evening off, so we left early to fish in Furnace River. <laughs> the fish weren't biting, so we decided to head for Eyeglass Creek. But we never got as far as the creek. Right through the woods, we saw that, that light. And skedaddled for home pronto. Yeah. <laughs> well... Uh, tomorrow, before Lone Ranger comes, you show me place where you see light. In daytime, you see light is only dead tree. Golly, Tunnel. I'd like to see it in the daytime, of course. In the daytime is right. I don't want to go back there in the dark. Well, now that you're looking more like yourselves, um, how about some pie and milk? That sounds good, Ma. Oh. Hey, oh, Marshall. that's Marshal Jim Fraser. He's coming through the lobby. Oh, Harry Keaton, I've got to be with Roscoe right away. Oh. Tonto! Uh, oh, Marshal Jim. <laughs> oh, gone, am I glad to see you. Where's the Lone Ranger? Oh, him, uh, not in town yet. Hey, Marshal, did you say the Lone Ranger? That's right, Pete. Uh, Tano, this is Pete Wiggins, the stage driver. Uh, how? Uh, glad to know you, Tano. And this is Harry Wilson, the shotgun guard. Uh, how? Now, you it. boys know Uncle Homer and Ma. Yeah, sure. Oh, no. uh, Pete, I thought you and Harry left town on the five o'clock stage. We did. The stage was robbed. But again? Three fellas stopped us at Jackknife Rock. He's with Roscoe around the hotel. I want to tell him about the robbery. I'll go and see if he's in his room, Marshal Jim. Fine. Thanks, Uncle Homer. I heard you mention my name, Marshal Jim. It's Mr. Roscoe. You're due for some more bad news, Whit. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I was opening my bedroom window when I saw Harry and Pete coming this way with the marshal. The same three fellas robbed us again, Mr. Roscoe. $10,000 in gold and paper money was in that strong box, Marshal Jim. It's another serious loss. We'll try to get it back, Whit. And with Tano in town, our chances look mighty good. Tonto. The Lone Ranger's Indian friend. Uh, Tonto, meet with Roscoe. Uh, how? Well, I'm glad to know you. The masked man himself will be in town tomorrow. Oh? From now on, you'll see some real action, Whit. We'll start by riding to the scene of the robbery right now to look for tracks. The gang never leave tracks, Marshal. Ah, uh-huh. we just haven't had eyes sharp enough to see their tracks. But Tano will cut their sign. Of me try find tracks, Marshal Jim. Good. Then let's go. Come on, Whit. You too, Pete and Harry. Yes, All right. right. I'd say I'll ride with you, boys. Good. Come along, Uncle Homer. Yeah, see you later, Ma. All right, Marshal Jim. You be careful, Homer. Don't worry, my dear. I'm a dead shot and an expert horseman. <laughs> Did shut my eye. Let's go with him, Inky. Yeah. You're staying right here in town. Oh, huh? Ma. Now, you've had enough excitement for one day with your ghost. <laughs> Besides, I need help in the kitchen. Uh, put some more wood in the stove, Ned. I've bread to bake. Yes. Yeah. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She'd skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That makes sense. 
Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O. And you'll agree. You'll like that delicious toasted oat flavor. And Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfasts every day with delicious Cheerios and milk and get that good go power. Then folks will say, She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. Darkness made it impossible for Toto to find the well-covered trail of the stage robbers. So he and Marshal Jim resumed the search at daybreak. Shortly after noon, Toto returned to town, where Inky and Ned persuaded him to ride with them to the tree that had frightened them the night before. Twenty minutes later, they drew rain in a dense wood, a short distance from the stump of a tree that had been struck by lightning. Oh, 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 there. As he dismounted, Toto noticed a hole in the stump and saw that the stump itself had become rotten. Covered with a growth of fungus, it was an ugly sight. <laughs> there, <a> tree. <laughs> Just an ordinary old tree stump. Uh, fungus from trees glow in dark. So that's what we saw. Oh, that's right. Golly, if I'd have known that's what it would have could we take some of that stuff off the tree? Oh, what stuff? That fox by yourself. Oh, take it if you want. But what to do with it? <laughs> we'll scare someone else with it like we were scared. Oh, what do you mean? We could play a lot of jokes on the folks in town with this. <laughs> Just think of what had happened if we put this stuff on a tree near Boot Hill. <laughs> scare a lot of fellows out of a year's growth. Oh, it's not a good idea to try to scare people like that. Oh, we'll tell them what it is after we've had the laugh on them, Tano. Give me a hand, Ned. Sure. We'll put as much of this as we can into our saddlebag. Right. I have a pen knife that'll make the job easier. Filled with mischievous glee, the boys worked rapidly. Soon they had one saddlebag filled with pieces of the dead tree. Then Inky reached into the hole in the stump. There must be lots of loose pieces of that fox fire in here, Ned. The saddlebag's full now. Then we'll fill another one. No. No, they're not time for that. We start back for town now. Meet mask friends. All right, but... Hey. What's wrong? Look what I found inside the tree stump. Ah, uh, just a piece of paper. It's a note, Ned. Huh? What note say? It, it says, keep out of sight... Until I contact you. Tano, Indian friend of Lone Ranger in town. Mask man arrived this afternoon. Uh, uh, who signed no? There's no name on it, see? Uh, it doesn't make sense. I... What matter, Ned? I know who wrote that note. I've seen his handwriting lots of times. Huh? Mr. Roscoe wrote it. Tell her who owns Stage Line? Yeah, he lives at the Henry house. I've seen his writing and printing on letters I've mailed for him. He must have brought that here early this morning. The tracks on ground show Ryder come this way three, four hours ago. Other tracks seem... Toto didn't finish the sentence, for he suddenly realized what the tracks on the ground meant. Silently blaming himself for not having noticed them sooner, he reached for his gun. Suddenly a twig snapped behind him, and Scar Pickens stepped from the screening trees and brush with his gun drawn. Don't finish that drawing, Jimmy. Hey. All right, get your hands up. That goes for you youngsters, too. Scar Pickens. Recognize me, eh? Well, that makes us even, Redskin. Tano, who is this fellow? Jim Crook, Inky. Law want him for a long time. You there? Me? Yeah. Take the engine's gun from his holster, drop it, and kick it this way. Gosh, I Do as you told him, be quick about it. It's all right, Ned. You do like him say. If not pay, take chances with killer. After Ned disarmed Tonto, Scar ordered the Indian to tie the boys' hands behind their backs and gag them. Rather than risk a fight that would endanger Ned and Inky, Tonto obeyed. Then the killer checked the ropes and gags. Yeah, they're none too tight. They'll do until we reach a hideout. Now heist them to their saddles. First, Tonto lifted Ned to the back of his horse. As he helped Inky mount, he noticed a split seam in the saddlebag holding a small piece of wood from the dead tree. A piece of the fungus-covered wood fell from the opening to the ground. Tonto grinned and whispered, Do not worry, Inky. 
me think we get help soon. Hey, what are you chawing about? Uh, me. Just make sure. Flap on the saddlebag passage. Uh, now that the boys are in the saddle... Scar swung his gun barrel upward suddenly. The blow caught Tonto on the side of the head. He fell to the ground unconscious. Helplessly bound and gagged. Ned and Inky watched the killer tie and gag their Indian friends. Yeah, I'll toss the engine across the horse's back. Then we'll start for the hideout. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger reached the meeting place he and Tonto had chosen on the outskirts of town. The masked man waited half an hour for his Indian friend, then headed for town. With the brim of his hat drawn low to conceal his mask as much as possible, he made his way through back streets and alleys to the Henry house. Leading silver ground hitched, he entered Ma Hank's kitchen. The buxom landlady greeted him warmly, but she knew nothing of Tonto's whereabouts. He left town early this morning with Marshal Jim. But I know doggone well he planned to leave the marshal in time to meet you. Have you seen him since then? Nope. And I haven't seen the marshal either. Hey, Ma! Homer, Hi. look who's here! Uh, well, mister, how are you? Hi, Uncle Homer. Right now he's worried about Tonto. Say, have you seen him, Homer? Not since this morning, but someone else in town might have seen him. Well, then start asking questions. We've got to find him. Shortly after dusk, Uncle Homer returned to report. Oh, I must have talked to everyone in town. What did you learn? Uh, Jake Peavy and Muley Evans saw town or north of town early this afternoon with Inky and Ned. Uh, but no one's seen the three of them since then. What kind of trouble could they have gotten into looking at a dead tree? Is that where they went? Yep. The boys told me all about it before they left town. Oh, well, where is the dead tree? Ned told Ma and me where it is. I might be able to find it. They said it's covered with a fungus called foxfire. Then let's go look for it. We should be able to see it easily in the dark. Right. Oh, 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 oh. Darkness was falling rapidly when Uncle Homer and the Lone Ranger reached the woods, where Tonto, Ned, and Inky had been captured. The small Easterner pointed to the glowing stump. There it is. The tree covered with foxfire. Easy, steady, big fella. The Lone Ranger dismounted and struck a match. Its brief light revealed the tracks on the ground. You'll not be able to see much by match light, mister. And the moon doesn't penetrate these woods. Now look there on the ground. Huh? A small glowing object. What is it? A piece taken from the tree stump. Uh, say, there's another piece on the trail ahead. Let's study the tracks. All right. Come on, boy. This way, Silver. Come on. In the hideout where Scar and Blaze held Tonto and the two boys prisoners, Nitro returned from a trip to town to report. I couldn't find the boss, Scar. He wasn't in his office or at the hotel. Uh, hold the dead ratted and look. Uh, quiet. Sounds like Ryder's heading this way. Get uh, set for trouble, boy. Uh, I'll take a look outside. I suppose. What brings you here, boss? Well, a job for you, boys. A lawman. Beat Marshal Jim Frazier. Keep your hands high, Marshal. You come with me. You'll pay for this, wit. You'll not live to see it if I do. What happened? How'd you capture the Marshal? I found out at noon that he and an Indian named Tonto left town at daybreak to look for your tracks at the scene of the robbery. With the Indian to help him cut sign, I was afraid he might find your trail. Yeah, yeah. Then he did. By the time I caught up with him, the Indian had left him. But he had already shown Marshal Jim your tracks. So that's it. I joined the Marshal, figuring I might be able to throw him off the trail. When I saw I couldn't, I got the drop on him and headed here. Good. It would have been only a matter of time until they have found this place himself. <laughs> We've got the engine who helped him find our tracks. You kept your tunnel? Hey, him and a couple of youngsters. One of them recognized your hand writing on the note you left in the tree stump first. Where are they? In the next room. Bring them out, Nitro. Sure thing. Still tied and gagged, the three prisoners were brought before Whit Roscoe. Marshal Jim Fraser turned on the outlaw leader. You dirty skunk. I'm savvy this whole thing now. You tipped off the gang about the gold shipment your stage carried. That's right. Not being responsible for the losses, I lost nothing but the goodwill of my clients. You, however, will lose your life. So will Tonto and these two boys. Well, you've bitten off more than you can chew this time. 
The Lone Ranger's in Modoc City. Well, we'll worry about him when you and the Indian are out of the way. Not before then. You're wrong. Uh, Watch here, the window. The masked man. And I'm at this window, you coyote. Get them. I'll kill you. Before the Costco could shoot, a silver bullet was already on its way. It struck the outlaw leader's shoulder, knocking him to the floor. The masked man's left hand gun blazed, smashing Scar's revolver, while Uncle Homer fired from the opposite side of the room at Nitro, who felt the impact of a wound in the shoulder. A silver bullet brushed the hand of the outlaw blaze. I'll get this gun. Marshal Jim scooped up the gun which Roscoe had dropped and pointed it at the writhing, groaning killers. Scar whipped out a long blade of knife and cried, I'll kill you, but the last thing I do. Drop the knife. Ignoring the warning, Scar gripped the blade. As he hurled it, the masked man fired. The knife shattered. <laughs> I never saw such shooting. Keep him covered, Marshal. I'll go home and I come inside. You bet I will, mister. Half an hour later, Tonto, Ned, and Inky were free, and Whit Roscoe and his killers were tied. Well, their wounds are all bandaged. They're set for the trip to jail, mister. Good. Golly. If you and Uncle Homer hadn't come when you did, those crooks would have killed all of us. How'd you find us? That was easy, Ned. We followed a trail of foxfire. Foxfire? <laughs> Pieces of wood from the tree stump guided us. Hey, the wood we took from the tree, Inky. It must have fallen from the saddlebag. It glowed in the dark. <laughs> Literally blazing a trail straight to this cabin. Um, <laughs> me make hole in saddlebag bigger, so fallen pieces show away. Fine, Dotto. Uh, Marshal, you and Uncle Homer will be able to take care of the prisoners, won't you? We'll have no trouble with them on the trip to town, now that they're disarmed and hogtied. Then Tonto and I will be on our way. Adios. Adios. Uh, that mess, man. We've you to thank for being captured, Scar. If you hadn't have brought that engine and those youngsters here, we'd still be free. <laughs> you made a magnificent blunder when you captured the friend of the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.